One of my personal favorite lighting effects in games is volumetric lighting, where you can see visible light shafts in the levels. But what exactly are volumetric lights and how do you use them in your own games? Open up Unity and let's take a look. Lighting is a key factor for making visually appealing scenes, and the volumetric lights that I was talking about exist in the real world as well, but we usually call them god rays or light shafts. In the game development world, we call these volumetric lights. In Unity, volumetric lights are available for anyone using the High Definition Render Pipeline, or HDRP for short. Now, no matter if you know what HDRP is and you just want to add volumetric lights to your game, or you haven't heard of the two features before, don't worry, because today I'm going to show you both. So I have this demo scene open in Unity, which you can download by going to the link in the description. This forest scene is called Fontainebleau. It was created by Unity Technologies using photogrammetry. Now we'll start in this outdoor environment and see how we can improve this with some volumetric lighting. Our goal is to add sun shafts into the scene and then set up additional light sources with their own rays. We will also learn about the different settings and options that we can tweak to get the best results. I also want to mention that I'm going to assume that you haven't used HDRP or volumetric lights before, so bear with me while I walk you through a few simple steps first to get set up. If you're starting a new project, in Unity Hub we have provided a pre-configured HDRP template project which allows you to avoid the setup process. If you're adding HDRP to an existing project, it's available in Unity as an additional package that we can install. So let's head over to the Window menu and enter the Package Manager. In the Package Manager, let's type in High Definition in the search field and install the High Definition RP package. HDRP is already set up in this project, so I won't repeat this myself. After Unity finishes installing HDRP, all we have to do is let Unity know that we are switching the renderer to the HDRP renderer. This is done in two easy steps, so just follow along. First, let's create the configuration file for HDRP. We will just right-click in our Project tab, pick Create, go to Rendering, and pick Create High Definition Render Pipeline Asset. Then, let's go to the Edit window and enter the Project Settings. In here, let's enter the Graphics tab and simply assign the configuration file we created in the Scriptable Render Pipeline field at the top. And there we go! Our project is now making use of HDRP. If you're upgrading an existing project, you will also need to upgrade your materials, and we will link to how to do that in the description below. I'm now going to deactivate the directional light that's here so we can walk through setting up a new one. So now, let's go ahead and add a new directional light to our scene, which is going to act as our sunlight in this forest. We can add a directional light by going to the Game Object menu, view the options under Light, and pick Directional Light. Let's select this light and go to the Emission tab. Here, we just want to make sure that we have a high enough intensity for our light. In this demo, the commonly used value in the various scenes is 30,000 lux, so let's cheat a little bit and use that number here too. Next, I'm going to unfold the Shadows field and enable the Shadow Map option. Shadow Map essentially just lets the objects affected by this light cast shadows. Contact shadows are also good to use on lights with a lot of visible shadows as they help capture small details and improve contact between an object and its shadow. I'm also going to enable color temperature in the emission tab and make this light a little more warm. And then we will unfold the volumetrics field and make sure that this option is enabled. Notice that the sun shafts are not visible to us though because we haven't set up the fog yet. But don't worry, we're going to do that in just a moment. Now, spoiler alert, in order to show you how these two settings will affect our light when we have the fog set up, I will show you a preview. Underneath Enabled, we will see Dimmer and Shadow Dimmer. Dimmer is the intensity of this light on the fog in our scene. I normally set the dimmer to a value between 0.7 and 1. Let's start with the value 0.7 for now and then we can come back and change it later if we want to. Shadow Dimmer dims the volumetric shadows this light source casts. I often have this value set to 1, which gives us a more sharp look on the sun rays. So let's set it to 1 and come back to it if we feel the need. Alright, so now that we have our light source, it is time to set up the fog in the scene. Let's head over to the Game Object menu once again, and this time go to Volume, and pick Sky and Fog Volume. 
With the high definition render pipeline, we now control scene settings through a volume framework, which gives us more flexibility when it comes to setting up multiple scene zones, post processing effects, different types of fog, and more. The sky and fog volume game object we created holds the values which define how an environment should be rendered. The overrides help us change the appearance of the scene within the boundaries of a volume. So first and foremost, let's go ahead and unfold the visual environment override. Depending on how you want to set up your scene, you can keep the type as physically based sky, but the demo that I'm using uses an HDRI sky with a cube map, so I'm going to pick the HDRI option. Then, let's remove the physically based sky override since we're no longer making use of it and replace it by adding an HDRI sky override. Let's click on all, which is going to enable all the options of this override, and then we'll simply add the cube map into the HDRI sky field and then increase the exposure until it's bright enough. Next, let's go to the fog override. We want to make sure that volumetric fog is enabled, which is the option that's going to let our light sources with the volumetrics enabled affect the fog resulting in sun rays. Once we enable this effect, you will see some changes in the scene lighting. Let me walk you through a few options that are important for the volumetric lights. Let's begin with the base height. Base height is the height of the boundary between the constant fog and the exponential fog. I personally like having this set to zero because this way we can have it affect the very bottom parts of the scene and then set a different value for the maximum height to have the fog reach a certain height. We can also change the fog attenuation distance, which controls the density at the base level. I like having this value around 160 in the scene since it makes for a more dense background fog. Another pair of important options are anisotropy and ambient light probe dimmer. Anisotropy controls the angular distribution of scattered light. A higher value essentially pulls the sun shafts closer to the sun, making it more intense. Ambient light probe dimmer reduces the intensity of the global ambient light probe that the sky generates. Now that we have a better grasp of the various settings, let's add a new light to our scene. We can head over to the game object menu, view the light options, and this time pick Spotlight. I'm just going to reposition and rotate this light so it faces us. Now, of course, we want this light to affect the fog in the scene as well, so let's make sure we have volumetrics enabled. In the Emission tab, I'm going to set a different intensity for this. And in the Add field, we'll set the value to 100. The Add field lets us decide the distance where a surface receives the amount of light equivalent to the intensity of the said light. And now, our spotlight is casting light shafts. These types of light sources can be used for other sources of light than the sun, like a car's headlights or even a street lamp. I often use a small amount of fog and volumetric lights in night scenes as well. I like to lower the dimmer of my light sources and have a lower intensity. One final tip from me is that you can highlight the high definition render pipeline asset file that we created at the very beginning of this video and turn on the high quality option for even better looking sun shafts. Just keep in mind that this will cost a little bit in terms of performance. So that's how we can add volumetric lighting into your Unity scenes using the high definition render pipeline. I've also included a link in the description box of this video, which is going to take you to the documentation for the high definition render pipeline and also one more link for the volumetric lighting specifically so you can read more about each feature to its own. Also, let me know in the comment section if you're working on a game right now where you are using the volumetric lighting system or if you're planning to use it. Speaking of which, thank you so much for watching and we look forward to seeing you in the comment section.